Hi, my name is Brian and this is another installment of my YouTube video series on how to um, build an aquarium stand and how to install an aquarium. So what I'm working on is a 350 gallon saltwater aquarium project. I've built a steel stand. Um, quick tip, if you want to follow along with this project, subscribe to uh, my channel and you'll be automatically notified when there are new videos available. You can also go to my channel and look at my playlists and I try to organize my videos in playlists to make it easier to find all the videos that are related to one another. So uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to move this into place. Okay, so now that I have a set of gloves that are not nasty. All right, so I'm going to anchor this into place and I've got some uh, wedge anchors and I've got a Harbor Freight um, rotary SDS type hammer drill. It, it makes really short work out of putting holes in concrete. And uh, so I'm gonna drag this into place and let's get started. So this thing is kind of heavy, so what I'm doing is just kind of pushing it, making sure it's exactly where I want. Now I'm going to inspect it. It's three feet. Just kind of walk around it and check it on all sides. Um, it is actually a 97 inches long. It's designed to stick out just a little bit past uh, the aquarium. And uh, you know, in my other videos, I talk about how to measure, cut, weld, prime, and paint this. Um, this looks fantastic. So one other thing I need to do is I need to check it for level. I'm pretty sure it's level, but I'm going to check it anyway. So this is... Um, within a fraction of degree of level. And I say that because the, in some areas the bubble touches um, one of the lines as opposed to being exactly in the center. But you know what, this is good enough. If this thing is within a quarter inch of being level over an eight foot span, no one else will be able to see that. I'll see it. Because you know, you're always your har own harshest critic. But this is good. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to set the SDS drill up and then I'm going to put some holes in uh, concrete. Now, you, the reason I'm using an SDS drill, they do make drill bits that are for concrete that you can use with a regular drill. That's the worst way to do it. A hammer drill is the next best thing and an SDS rotary uh, drill is the cat's meow. Um, these are about 70 bucks at Harbor Freight. You can catch them on sale. And they use special bits. The bits are about, I think this one was $11 at Home Depot today. This is a Bosch bit and it is, uh, it has a carbide tip so it's rated to cut through rebar should I encounter rebar. And I know there's rebar under here because I put it there. So, um, you know, if you've got a lot of holes to drill, this is really the right way to do it. So um, it has a great chucking system. This is one of the other reasons I like is you just pull the chuck back and insert and boom, you're done. So <clears throat> let me hook this up. And then It can also be used as a lightweight demolition hammer. So one of the things I have to do is I have to turn the chuck and adjust it to work in drill mode. Um, and it'll both drill and hammer. As always, it's good to have hearing protection. Let me get my anchors. So 
So before I start to put all this stuff in, I, I want to talk just a little bit about it. If, uh, and I'm going to put the camera down, and these are the anchors, and I'm actually going to zoom in so you can see them. Um, you know, they sell these singly in tens and in a 25 pack at Home Depot, and the 25 pack is just a little bit cheaper per unit. I need about 15 of them, but you know, there's no telling how many other things I'm going to anchor throughout the course of working on this house. So I went ahead and bought 25 of them. Um, you know, if this was a wooden floor, I wouldn't bother to anchor it. Um, in fact, I'm, I don't know that I would want to put this tank on a wooden floor again. Um, certainly not with a steel stand with this sort of point, just because it creates a lot of force, downward force in one location. Um, but this stand is probably okay without being anchored. Um, I have a tendency to over-engineer my projects, and I don't necessarily think of that as a bad thing. Uh, that's a margin of safety. So everybody's a little bit different. So you may see people who install aquariums and don't anchor them. I think that's foolish. You know, if there was something wrong with one of my welds, the anchor might be what keeps this still while I fix it. So, you know, I don't think that's the case either. You know, I have uh, designed this to be very mechanically sound, and um, you know, but I'm gonna I'm gonna probably over anchor this, and I, I may put you know as many of these anchors in as I can get holes for. So I'm gonna put my uh, hearing protection on and go to it. Now you may be asking yourself, hey, wait a second, you're not wearing eye protection, and you're right because. Um, I'm using a half inch hardened steel bit. I'm drilling into a floor and I'm drilling past a quarter inch steel plate. Nothing's coming back. So yes, um, you probably just saw that I put a hole in the concrete floor in all of about 10 seconds. And that's why a rotary hammer drill rocks. A regular hammer drill doesn't do this, and a regular drill would take forever. Um, so if you got a project like this, rent one or buy one. These things are awesome. So next step is got to get this package open. And these are Redhead brand anchors. And always put the bolt on before you insert the anchor. Pull that out. And then we'll just send this down. So I want to get two of these in. So the concrete's not as thick everywhere, and that's one of the reasons I'm going to kind of do overkill on the anchors is I just don't know where I've got good thick concrete and where I don't. I need to get a vacuum and get this dust up as I do it. I'm sometimes a little bit lazy on this stuff, and I found that if I just discipline myself and clean up as I go, it's not as bad. You know, this little bit of dust winds up everywhere in the house. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, hey, wait a second. Yeah, the house is under construction. Why does it matter if there's a little bit of dust? And you're right, the house is under construction, but you still want to minimize the dust. All right, so next thing's next, I need to go get a wrench to tighten these. So I'm using a 
a half inch drive wrench, and the reason I'm going to use a half inch drive wrench is I may switch to an impact gun later. Um, you don't need an impact gun for this. I'm just lazy and I like power tools. So uh, the instructions say to turn it three to five turns. So <clears throat> the other thing that these uh, cheap gloves do is double as knee pads. So that feels like three to five. I'm just tightening until I get some tension. There we go. So I've got some tension at this point. So uh, ain't going. Nowhere. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and secure the rest of it and then I'll finish all the uh, drill holes or all the anchors. So I'm going to do one in each pad and then I'm going to go back and fill it in. This one didn't catch. So it's a very shallow anchor and that means it's a weak anchor. And that's okay, that's why I'm putting a bunch of these in is that I know that this, this floor is a pretty weak anchoring surface. All right, so I have six in and um, now I'm gonna drill a bunch more holes and put in a bunch more anchors. So one of the things that's kind of interesting is half inch anchors have a pullout strength of um, 4,600 pounds to 5,100 5, pounds depending on the strength of concrete. And their shear strength is 4,760 pounds. So essentially the entire aquarium could hang vertically off of one bolt in like this and for one bolt to pull out would require four and a half thousand pounds of force minimum and um, that means that this thing ain't going nowhere and again that's the idea this transfers load it solidly connects the aquarium stand to the floor so that it becomes part of the structure Okay, at this point I've drilled one, two, three, four. I've drilled a bunch of holes. I'm not gonna count them. I've drilled a bunch of holes. I've vacuumed up all the dust. Now I'm gonna insert anchors. There are a couple of holes that are along a seam in the concrete where there was a cut made and a patch. And um, those are not, they don't seem very deep. So again, this, this reinforces the idea that putting in multiple anchors will help strengthen the overall anchoring because I don't think that I've got good consistent slab thickness here and um, it just is what it is so you got to make the best of it sometimes yeah this is really common in residential you know they're worried about how fast can they finish a house and how well can they control costs not you know not along the same lines as you know I built a building about oh gosh it's been 10, 11, 12, 13 years ago, I built a building in 2002 and 2000, 2002, 2003, I built a building and, you know, I made sure we got at least a six inch thick slab. I had tons of rebar in that floor. Uh, I didn't know about SDS hammer drills at the time and, uh, but it was a great, great building. It was kind of funny because when I sold it, the, uh, I, I told the new owner, because they were like, oh, we're going to tear it down and build a house where your warehouse used to be. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, fair disclosure, there's a lot of concrete there, like six trucks. That's 60 yards of concrete, ton of rebar. And I uh, told them, I said, you know, there's a grade beam that's two foot thick by a foot and a half wide that runs around the outside perimeter. And so they called me because their excavator was threatening to quit and walk off the job because 
he said, you know, hey, the slab is two feet thick. This is crazy. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that makes you feel good when you build a building and a demolition contractor threatens to walk off the job because the slab is too well built. You know, I had to reassure him that it wasn't the case. <clears throat> that it really was what I said it was, six inches thick, and they just need to keep pushing. Sure enough, they did, and they, they tore that building down. And it's always a shame to see somebody tear down something that's perfectly good, but, you know, that's what paid for this place. So, everything in life's a trade-off. So as you can see, it only took, you know, two minutes to uh, tighten all the uh, anchors with the impact wrench. Um, my five horsepower Harbor Freight air compressor behind me kicked in. No big deal. I'm going to shut that off. So uh, there you have it. This thing is fully installed. Ain't going anywhere. We'll go ahead and recheck the level. Yeah, it's still perfect. You know, this is, in fact, the level may not be square. Yeah, it's, it's very level. The next step in the process for the aquarium stand is to install a piece of one and one eighth inch thick plywood. This is a super thick plywood that's about $53 a sheet at Home Depot. I'll bring a full sheet in here, I'll snap a chalk line, and then I'll cut off the part that extends past this. Um, and, uh, at that point, the aquarium stand will be ready for the aquarium to be lifted into place. Once the aquarium is uh, lifted into place, um, we'll mark where the penetrations need to be. Then we'll pull the aquarium back off one more time. And we will drill all the holes for the penetrations, make sure that they don't hit uh, any, of the, any of the cross members. And um, then we'll place the aquarium in, in location and uh, on a piece of pink styrofoam and just kind of leave it alone for a while. So, exciting stuff. Thanks for watching my video and I hope that you found this interesting, informational, and inspirational. Um, hopefully your projects will go uh, as smoothly as mine seem to most of the time. Let me hear your feedback, leave comments. Um, don't forget to share my video, like my video, and uh, if you would like to get updates about this in the future, be sure to subscribe.